ain't got it. Bro, 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 five bro, we ain't got it. Don't spend no money, ain't got no clothes, ain't got no cars, ain't got no hoes. We broke, bro, bro. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, who are now listening? Check, check. Settings on, everything on. We in here. Yo, it's a brand new episode of Two Broke Twimbos. We back again. My name is Danny, that guy, aka Denias, aka the only guy, aka your girlfriend probably pities me, aka Dan Moore. When you look at my wallet, it's more like Dan Less. Uh, Phil is on his way He just hollered and said The combi broke down And also since he's sitting Pakadoma It's difficult But he's on his way Don't even stress But in the studio We got Buffalo Soldier himself What up man the D on me was good Yo <laughs> Listening here yeah, Just waiting here Listening to your Oh your Brock intro bro I'm like yo <laughs> That's depressing man like, Ah oh, snap man. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is the most painful I've ever heard What the Oh snap Also in the studio We got uh, Buffalo Soldiers manager His name is Kamu What's good man Yo man Thanks for chilling And sitting down with us uh, Another high profile interview For Two Broke Twimbos We keep making it happen <laughs> Regardless of the brokenness You check out True true That's the being broke <laughs> So Two Broke Twimbos Keeps rolling The Don't forget man We got we got mm. Twitter Facebook SoundCloud YouTube uh, Stitcher Basically, any RSS feed reader, you can find us on there. And don't forget, if you're listening to this via the podcast and you've subscribed, you can also go look for more content on www.2brooktwimbos.com. That's what we do. All right, but we're going to get into the interview, though. Right. We bro, we bro, we bro. Yeah, buff. Mm-hmm. What's going on, man? I'm good, my dog. What's going on? Good, good. Welcome to Zim. Back yeah, to man. Zim, I should say. Yeah, man. Yeah. I you know. Fresh off your performance at Haifa, that went dope, yeah? For sure. All right. So hopefully by the end of this interview, uh, we can have a full understanding of who Buffalo Soldier is. The real talk. A less of an interview, it's like a discussion. You know what I mean? So we yeah, man. Two broke trombos. Real quick, real quick. And not only that, we can also discuss terms of donation or, uh, to the cause. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, the broke trombos. We, we gotta buy. I mean, we gotta buy a ticket into Haifa. You know what I'm saying? Snap. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you thought, you thought this was just an interview. Nah, man. It's a crap. <laughs> All right, yo, no, man. So, hey, let's start right from the beginning, man. Tell okay. us, Buff, when did you start, man? Yeah, man. Oh, right. oh, okay, I think I've really, really, uh, you know, lost the times and year exactly. But, uh, look, I think I've, 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 I started my first break. I don't know if I should say where I started singing music. But when I started singing, it was probably 95, 96. When I was 15 years old, I started doing, like, or, you know, a bit on a pro level. 15 years, I would say, I probably started doing music. That's like 95, 96. But when I was eight, you know, I started singing a bit. My father was a musician. Yeah. So when I was eight years, I, you know what I mean, I, I kind of used to just sing. Like I couldn't, I remember when I was like seven, six, I don't know, some other kids can write now when they're six. And seven. I couldn't write. <laughs> so I could just cram music. So what I used to do is like I could, I could just cram it when I have an idea of a song or whatever. I used to have melodies come in my head. I would cram it. Like if I go in, if I get in an experience, like I was chased, Baboons chased me and my boy, like we, uh, my brother, we were in Kariba. I, I got back home. I started just singing and making up a song called, I never forget that song. It's called Zoran Singa Kangan. Zoran Singa Kangan. Zoran Singa Kangan. We pandaga maswane maguru. Gumbu, gumbu, gumbu. Gumbu, gumbu. So it was there, you know, like for me, it was always like that. I would, any experience, I would, uh, I would express it through music. And then my father was a musician. He tried buying me a couple of instruments, but I, you know, I just break the instruments. Every time I get angry, yeah, I remember he brought me a flute. I get angry for asking for like five cents and you don't want to give me, I break that instrument. And then, cause to me, I thought I was fixing him. I'm like, cause you brought it. You bought it. So I'm like, you bought me a guitar, uh, um, olive in those olive in oil yeah. uh, guitar with twine. I remember yeah, those. All of them took used to do an ad with it. Yeah. He bought me that one. I got pissed up. I broke it. You know what I mean? And then he was like, You ain't no musician, man. I keep buying instruments and keep breaking it. But now, little did he know that I was a rock star. I think, you know, that's why I kept on breaking them instruments. You know what I mean? He was a rock star in me. But look, you know what I mean? Later on, I hooked up. Way, I hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> I hooked up with my cousins. My cousins, like, you know what I mean? I had cool cousins. Like, when, when, when my, 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 my mom and my father, um, I divorced. I had to move my mom and her. So we moved into uh, Mufakose. So I did my like my primary school 
in Mufakose and what what and stuff like that. So for me, it's like you know, every time when we get it, when 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 because I had cool cousins, you know, that were that were well up, family was well up, so they would go to boarding schools. And when they come back, they come back with this new, cool, whatever, hip-hop, and that and that. Because I'm coming from that Kariba vibe and village and all that stuff, man. <laughs> and all I know is showing up. But the thing with me is, like, I was one of that, that you know, one of them, them dudes, you know. I just, you know, chill and watch, you know what I mean? And I see them do what they do. I see them doing the dances. I see them do whatever. You know you know what they, what they always say yeah. about a JJ? A JJ see Johnny just come or a Timber comes to town. Mm. He's out here, my nigga. You know, observing. You know what I mean? And then he learns and he do whatever. So I was that kid and then I started learning. Tomorrow I surprised them. I'm busting some lines. I'm like, yo, oh, you busting lines? Next day I see them doing some break dance. You know, I train on my side and they come back. They see me busting the moves more than they busting the moves. They taught me basketball. So I pretty much ended up starting doing all the cool things. Yeah. You know, I saw fashion on them. I was like, yo, I got everything I saw. I wanted to elevate it, take it to the next last level. So, you know, I mean, I got to be a fashionista, you know, a swag trend, you know, I got to be, you know, I started, uh, for me, I, I always, I look at myself as a versatile artist because I can sing if I want to sing R&B, I can do that, you know, I mean, I can rap if I want to rap, but my passion was in reggae and dance and music. Yeah. I started off rapping and singing with my crew before. Yeah. You know what? From your, your good or song, whatever. <laughs> It seems to me like in a, in a different set of circumstances, like like just a little <laughs> tiny change in your history, you could have been a, like a, a Sungura artist. Straight up, my nigga. <laughs> that would have been dope. <laughs> but I did I did some few one or two Sungura songs when, <laughs> when, when, when it was really tough. Though. I was like, hey, man, I got to get that hit, though. You, and then you did then I Sungura did a song right? called Paskana Mungwari. It was a Sungura like, like Eben Sungura. <laughs> it was what's gonna move I really I know from Banebota I cheap Vasca Shua Mungwari I know from Banebilo I see you that my number So I was there my dog You see that guitar going in there I was in there you know I've tried it all man Isn't that the I've one done it Isn't all. that the one like, y'all were, were in like the back of a pickup truck and whatnot That's the one that is there was in the back of the truck and, yeah. and the V I mean you know how it is that was some, that's with some an half yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah man shout out to Kamu though you know what I mean he's the he's the energy lord representing the big names Man I saw Kamu 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 was on stage with you <laughs> Jumping and going crazy and yeah, man. I wanna hype man. I got out of that. I wanna. The last. I literally. Do you know what? Uh, you guys said you saw my tweet about the hype man thing. So I did it right there while I was watching. I was like, damn, I need this guy in a job interview, bro. <laughs> There's no hype man like that. There's no way you not get that job, brother. But like, actually, you know what? I need mean, CEO position. It's yours. I think. I think really, like you know, because hype was was such an important booking for us. You know, when the call came in, it's mm. probably the first show that we snapped at. You know, yeah. These are the type of bookings that we tend to appreciate. You know, mm. we're, we're we're the brand is a performing brand. Mm-hmm. So every 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 time you see us on stage, or every time you see the brand, the brand must show that it's a performing brand. Yeah. You know, we were talking about this just the other day. Like, you know, recording this recording artist. Okay, cool. But uh, you gotta be able to perform it, man. You gotta be able to resonate all of that when you actually come on stage, because the people cannot be with you when you're in studio. Mm-hmm. What they hear on record is not who you are. Mm-hmm. You know, performance, being a showman, is what it's about. So that's what we're trying to find ourselves. You know, the energy has to be high, high level energy. You know, who knows? We might even do a song called Energy, or even mm-hmm. go jump on a rhythm called Energy Rhythm. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah, man, but I mean, that's dancehall, isn't it? That's, yeah, that's high it. energy. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Electrical, you know? But you see what it does. It gets everyone else jumping, doesn't it? Because they, <laughs> it, it, they, you got a guy like Gus who's really kind of like low-key. Mm. I saw the guy jumping in the end, too. Mm. Like, yeah, so, that's, know, that's you, surprising. Yeah, like, because Gus, when you speak to him, he's like, oh, no. Yeah, jumping, it's a really he had cool a guy. jump, bro. It was a jumping. Yo, it, it was a jumping <laughs> performance. Yeah. yeah. Like, the whole energy was electrical, bro. You could not be, you could, you, everybody was touched by that electricity. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? The waves that's are going it. out, though. Yeah. That's it. And you know big shout out to Eiffel, man, because they really put together a nice spread for us out there. Mm. Yeah. You know, you know, a lot of times you go out there and people don't actually like, you know, make an effort to allow you to express yourselves, you know. You know, shout out to uh Mafia nineteen band as well. Man. Yeah, man. They did a good job. Good job, you know? yeah. So splendid job, man. 
if, if we keep getting more bands like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'll just keep turning up, man. We'll keep jumping up. I yeah. think what, what we need to do now, we need to put like a bar. For every performance, we need to put like a high jump bar. Mm -hmm. so just <laughs> you see who jumps, you see who jump jumps the highest. Yeah, man, because it's a high jump thing, you see it. You know, the highest jumper. <laughs> Damn, it's real, I, it's real. Yo, uh, uh, yeah, no, nah, man, that high performance was crazy. But yeah. no, going back to the whole uh, the, the the beginnings, right? When when did yeah. you actually start? Like, this is now dancehall, reggae dancehall is what I'm actually gonna be doing. True. Look, um, then then uh, I was in. A, remember, I said I was in a group. I was in a group called IRC Intelligent Rockers Crooks. So, high school times I was solo, you know, obviously, and then then was also doing some stuff with my cousins. Which high school, by the way? Um, like I was a school called Mfako was a three. Mfako was a three. Yeah, no. man. Only the realest know what it did, but now <laughs> he just got real. But look, um, and then I was always one of them dudes that just wants to put on his search, put a cap on, and leave the hood. Always, you know, in my hood. Hey, Buffalo, hey, Musalaji, hey, Musalala, hey, you know, what, 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 you know, all that. It was always, I was one of them, the, the, you know, because I, I, I didn't start swag when I was, I always, you know, would, you know, drop, sag the pants, yeah. you know, you know what I mean, wear some cool uh, feelers or Shaquille O'Neal's or whatever that was popping at that time. I, you know what, I, I always thought the reason yeah. behind sagging pants mm. was because, gee, yeah, black, no, no, nah, not yeah. even that. <laughs> black parents were like, fam. You gotta grow into your clothes. I can't be buying mm. your clothes every mm. year. So mm. what? I'm gonna mm. buy you like two sizes. The bigger too ones, big. two sizes be too big. <laughs> yeah. And then like, and then it just. It was like that. Heads. That's true though. But in the hood, you you was you were right there. <laughs> you buy us four years the uh, clothes. Yeah. To come. That's the thing. So you start rocking four years clothes to come, or they will leave, or your cousin, who's like, who's in the upper level or whatever, or your brother yeah, when or he's whatever. Done with his yeah, he done with his clothes. <laughs> and then they give you them clothes. So yeah. it was always big. But yeah. it, look, um, then from there, you know, for me, I started, like like I said, I always wanted to leave the hood. Not to, like, leave the hood like, I hate the hood. No, but to make it out of the hood. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I started going out there, and then I'm picking forward to the city, and then I met up uh, with, with uh, Prince Tendai. He had high-density studios at the time. They were in town. In the, um, at, I forgot exactly, but the, way, uh, the studio was situated in town somewhere. So we started going, going there. You know, he gave, it, he gave the key. To, uh, there was a guy called Busy D. I was working for him there. Um, they gave me studio time, you know what I mean? And then I recorded, like, started recording my first singles there. And what, you know what I mean? When analog, actually, we, rec we you know, first recordings were analog. Because mm. he had analog. You know, later on, had digital and whatever. Then later on, we now met up with, there's a guy called Gordon as well. Well, I said, MC Sheet and then he recorded. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so we started recording there as well, you know, doing some tracks there and whatever, whatever. So, for uh, for me... I just kept on recording. I remember even before I left with IRC, we had an album, like 97, 98, we had an album, and we even did a track, and we had a video that was on Joy TV. <laughs> that time when they had Joy TV, our video used to pop there, man. There was a video, called, a track we did called Reputation. Just talking about the hood, you know, just the reputation that you get, eh, if you're from Falcos. Yes, this is what you get, eh. Coming from Falcos. So, because we was like more like an outcast type of group. Was that it, was it dance all though? No, nah, it wasn't dancehall. It was like I didn't start. I didn't. I didn't. I tell you, the dancehall stuff. Yeah, was the stuff that I used to do like on my own. But when I'm in a group, I should do either rap or do hooks. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Then later on, obviously, you know, what I mean, started pushing solo stuff. Started doing my own dancehall. I did a feature with even Chimbetu. Busy D produced it. Chimbetu at the time was recording high density, so and then I did a I did a song. He, he did a there was a song called Ndure Ndure that he did. Mm. So that and do and do the song, we proposed for a remix with BZD and whatever. And then we did the remix with uh, this guy used to play David, oh. yeah, David from Power <laughs> FM, yeah, David from Power FM used to play, it. used to play the song Kumodi, mm. yeah, used to play the song DJ Scott as well, mm. used to play the, play the track back back in the days. That remix that I did with uh, Simon Chopper and they played it. We it was not a remix on our own. It was a remix we did with Simon Chopper and So so I guess at this point people are now hearing the name Buffalo. Yeah, I mean they they um, is that you what know, you were people, called that time? I think my name that time was Pretty Boy. I used to call myself Pretty Boy before because I, <laughs> I used to have cornrows. I used to have cornrows. Don't, don't hate, <laughs> it, homie. It's a pretty boy swag, though. Pretty boy, you gotta, you gotta sell. You gotta sell that to the hands. I, I came in the game like I'm just trying to sell my shit to the guys. <laughs> I ain't trying to do it for the homies. Oh, if the homies don't, if the home, the homies will only cap for the hands. 
Can we so, even know this? So, I don't know this. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, dog, look. And I know why, because he knows me, man. Like, <laughs> now that I know, man, I'm going to be going in, bro. Yeah, hey. Don't make fun of me all yeah, the time. Right. <laughs> Some things I don't tell the homies, though. But look, man, after that, we started pushing on them. I started pushing. You know, the, the whole grind was elevated. It was motivated, you know. I was inspired. I started looking into South Africa too much, you know. Um, I was working. I remember I was, I was working. I used to work at Pharmascope. I was a vet salesman. Mm. So uh, veterinary products there, man. Mm. All these antibiotics and whatever, whatever, you know. Yeah. For the animals. So um, from there, I left the job. And then I started, I visited my sister. Because I have a sister, Bez. She's married and based in the U, in, the S, in SA. So I moved there. You know what I mean? Checked out the scene. I saw the scene was nice. It was like 98. Uh, then I was like, yo. I need to move here, dog. Cause that time I met, I met, I saw Amu. There was uh, Amu Nishin, and there was another guy. Forgot his name, but uh, I met those guys, man. They they concert in Soweto, mm. um, like a show in, in Soweto, going down in Soweto. So when I went there, when they were my brother-in-law, I was like, I saw these dudes performing, and I was like, Yo, my brother-in-law, man, where we come from, we can just ask the promoter to get the microphone and jump on. So I went there, I was like, Yo, man, can I just say do something on this on, before the guys, cause they were setting up for Amu and him to come on. Mm. And then he gave us the mic. But he said, like, look, the only piece that we have right now is this house. Because, you know, when they're still setting up, there's that, that beat they're just playing. Yeah, the, the like a quiet to house beat was playing there. I was like, yo, I don't care about no beat, dog. Just give me the microphone. He gave us the microphone. I was hungry as hell, dog. And for me, it's like, you know, when you've written so much. Yeah. You've written so much that you could go on and on. I kept on going, like, I don't know for how long. Dudes, until the dudes started coming up trying to set up for the for the gig, I was just going performing for nobody. I was out here, but for me, what it did was it gave me that I need to come back to SA type of thing because that whole platform, that whole nice whatever vibe, you know. Because I was coming for I used to do um, live wire with uh, Russ Trevor, yeah, and in, uh, in town, in the city. So I came here. I was like, yo, man. I, when I came to SA, I was like, I gotta make it here, though. So I came back home, and then I was like, I'm going back. To suit up nice, and then I went back. Cool. Since then, we've been grinding. We used to gr- we're grinding in you, bro. When you fell, met up with the crew, uh, with my crew, my African crew, uh, African goons. There was Instinct, Kweku from Ghana, and then two rest from Ghana, and another guy from Nigeria, Maye, and the South African guy from South, from uh, his name was Pop- Popsido. He was so we formed a, a crew called Street Disciples. You know what I mean? Because we were all Africans who just met, you know, in the streets and whatever. So we started grinding like that too. Then I mean, since then. What year were we talking? Was this what year was this now? This was now around 2002, 2003. Yeah. Okay. So we grinded. You know what I mean? For me. Had you had a a, a track or a song that was kind of breaking out or? With the crew, we once did a song. Once did a remix of Gao. That uh, hmm. So we changed it to say Welcome Matthew, uh, which was some language in, in West Africa that we were using there. Mm. Um, it's called Say Welcome, uh, you know, uh, Matthew. Say Welcome Matthew. Uh. So it was mixed with uh, hip hop and whatever. I was just doing the hooks, they were doing the raps at that time. So from there, it, it actually went on Channel O. It was the first track that actually went on Channel O. Huh. But you know, that once in a while type of Channel O. Yeah. Play, you know what I mean? So from there, later on, went to, uh, later on, I started doing some solo projects on the side. Doing that side, doing that, and then I met up with Waxy, and then when I met up with Waxy, um, you know he had me do my thing, you know the guy kept on dropping beats, I kept on going on it nonstop, bro, freestyling, what what nonstop. The dude was like, "Yo, man, you gotta come to the studio, man. I'm also putting out some 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 artists together and whatever." I was like, "Alright, cool." I went there, like I said, man. When you on the upcoming, you write a lot. Mm. So I'm not coming from the era where you gotta record on the phone, you know, recording. You know what I mean? Whatever. We had to write it and cram it and, you know. Mm, and the stuff hunger like and the whatnot. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I take so it by then, you now knew how to write. Yep. Yep. <laughs> ah, yeah. And, you know what I mean? I was, I was good at it. You know what I mean? So, from there, boom. And then I hooked up with Waxy, man. And then, and then uh, I had a track, Bubble Your Bums. But before then, I had a track called uh, Bum Bum that Waxy played because I didn't have anything. So, because after I believed him, I was like, yo, man, I got a video, man. The Bum Bum video had a... You know, some girls, uh, some models from, uh, was supplied by a uh, size four modeling agency mm-hmm. with Ricardo. There we shot there at the uh, Star Studio. Tenem Fruits also sponsored that video as well, you know. So from there, 
And then I was pushing that in there, say, yo, man, play me. And Wox was playing it because he had already filmed. He was like, yo, man, I'm going to play. But, you know, you need to do something better, man. Yeah, all right. So afterwards, uh, other artists that was, he was pushing, Maye, had to come in first. But I was featured on the single. So it was me, Maye, and Ego. So we featured then and we came home. And then after, bam, we, I now dropped my single, Bubble Your Bums. And then that's, that was 2007, 2008. Then I won two awards right away. Best newcomer and best record dancer. Okay. So you dropped this bubble your bums, yeah, right, and it was a, a dance hall item. Yeah, it was a dance hall yeah. item. It was one of those commercial dance songs. All right, so you did it with DJ Waxy. I didn't do it with DJ Waxy, but I was under with, under DJ Waxy at that time. Yeah. Okay. All right, dope. So then distribution was handled proper, proper. It was uh, taken to the next music. With the, there was a distributor a company <clears throat> called Next Music. They didn't want to used to do Af- uh, African stuff like for, for the white guys, and they believed in us. And I don't know. Then they pushed us. They released the album. The whole Esanda Pezulu. I was on that album called The Movement. That was mm. the album, which I think dropped 2009 or 2010 or something. So at this point, were you still thinking making music for Zimbabwe or for SA? No, no, no. I was exposed to another, to different, yeah. to different, you know what I mean? The whole, it was, the whole set was just different. It was now, I was looking in Africa and it was South Africa and Africa. So for me, songs had to be um, clearer to someone who doesn't understand dancing, to someone who just, you know, who because I was trying to be versatile, to, to, uh, universal in a form to and people who don't even listen to the music, mm. we had nothing to do with the music. So the music had to be crossed over somehow. And uh, I had to talk to people that not really familiar with dancehall and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Because we was, Wax was a mainstream DJ, he was a hip hop DJ. So for him to also play that, it has to be music that's kind of crossover. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, dope. Yeah. But uh, I mean, at that time, I suppose to a certain extent, hip hop's always been big, but the South African hip hop scene was still kind of. Yeah, it was not. Yeah, it was kind of down. Not even, I would just say not in existence. Yeah, it was there. Everything was but house. Not, yeah, quite tall. I mean, you had artists like Amu and then mm. um, Flex. Was it Flex? Zubs. Zubs was then. Yeah. It was Flex. Yeah, I think it was Flex or something. Yeah, you know, there was a lot of artists that were there. It was also some underground hip hop, but you know, what I mean, like you know, uh, also these guys were there. Cashless society, broke niggas like two bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cashless society. We, yeah, should, we yeah. should look them up. Yeah, man. They were one of those, um, you know, the yellow bone swag, <laughs> colored dudes, rappers. But they were good, man. Yeah. They deserve the one, uh, 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 one, two, one, two. Uh, I want two, one, two, one, two, one, two. They, uh, they dub tracks. I forgot them, but yeah. Cashless society, you should look them up. I will. Yeah, Snazzy D and them. They, they look like uh, a group that could be in our, uh, in our lane. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> true. All right, mm. all right, man. That's dope. So pretty much just the the whole like, the, the whole story of the come up. Mm. Uh, obviously, a lot of people will be interested in that mm. because uh, one of the things that's always talked about in Zim mm. is the fact that Buffalo Soldier gets you know he's on he's on he's on all the he's on trays MTV mm. he's on Channel O you know he's winning awards he's uh, always in the in the news and the entertainment news so you, you're already a celebrity in SA you know mm-hmm. what I mean? yeah, yeah and people always like we we also want you know what I mean mm-hmm. and. In Zim, you know, what I mean, there's a there's a lot of dudes that mm. they got a hot song or they got some hot songs and they mm. got some they get a, a bit of airplay and a lot of people know their names, but you're kind of standing next to them somewhere, maybe in the the store or something. What mm. up? What up? Oh, I like your song. Nice, mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. And I know part of the reason behind that is obviously, first of all, because Zim doesn't really have a celebrity culture, mm-hmm. uh, unless you're someone from outside, mm-hmm. and you to a certain extent qualify to be that because mm. they see you in SA kind of you know what I mean but otherwise general Zimbabwean artists uh, okay let hey me, can I take l- a selfie here can I get an autograph yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let like me, okay let me explain <laughs> for me how I see to it first the reason why that kind of happens is um, um, you know it's this whole industry is a make believe industry uh, dudes see me in SA they've seen the status right so they you're coming at me knowing the value of the status and the brand mm. as you've seen it you measure and judge uh, you know the brand as how you see it hold up hold up Phil's yeah. here oh Phil what up bro you good <laughs> one of those days huh yeah yeah so you're saying it's a, it's a make believe industry so basically you know what happens with most artists and you, you understand you need to understand people is, is how they see you on TV or they read about you or whatever. 
is exactly how they measure you or judge you whatever you know what i mean yeah so you only come up like for example let me ask you something when you when you coming out when you going to like when you approach someone in a mercedes benz you don't approach them like someone in a 323 you, know? nah, well. you have some level of respect and fear you know what i mean like i can't just come at this guy like that Mm. There's some sort of respect and level of respect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like uh, it's all in packaging. So basically, so you've been selling dreams. So no, exactly. Everybody been selling dreams. Yeah. The, the whole United States, the whole hip hop, yeah. whatever, it's all uh-huh. dreams. Hey, nobody live like they, they in a music <laughs> video. But the thing is, it's all packaging of what the market wants to see and, and what the people want to see. People that buy it. And you know that's what they want. That's what they want to see. You know th- th- those type of the masses of the market. They, you know th- we go for type of thing. You know what I mean? Like there's people that like the realness or whatever. But my thing is, look, um, the artists. We if artists start making money, you know what I mean? If artists really start making money and get some sort of status, you will not come at an artist like that. First of all, you won't be everywhere because he has so much money. Not to put himself on that everywhere or whatever, right? You, you get my point, right? You know, mm. I'll give an example. In the beginning, let me give you an example of like even an AKA man. I'll tell you the truth. When AKA was an AKA, he would just be a normal dude in the club, you know what I mean? Looking like you don't even want to take a pic <laughs> from him when he had his first single. Yeah. When Casper was Casper, he was looking like, yo man, do I even really want to pick from this dude, even though he had Gushesha, right? But when Casper, made Doc Chabelez and he made a little bit of millions he will make you feel like <coughs> you gotta come at a nigga right when you come at him you gotta come at him like yo man this dude on another level now because the packaging and the levels have changed it don't look like you can just come at him like that you are measuring when you see customers people like yo that dude huge though man you know that was the status the whatever so automatically in your head you know man even if you see him you know you got you see him you gotta get a pick you know what I mean? Mm. You, you, it's it's kind of okay to ask him for a pick at a level and extent as he is. You be like, for example, if I if I see Rihanna, I'm gonna ask for a pick. You know, do everything, group it around, whatever, open the door for her, do all that stuff because I understand the level where Rihanna is. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I know where Rihanna is standing. Is so for me, reason, I'll solo. I will, there's not even solo in it, but there's no pride there. It's just me taking my pick with Rihanna. We out here. Oh, Chris Breezy there. I ain't even going, you know what I mean? I'm out here. I'm taking my pick with, with Chris Brown. It's just one thing that even Casper was even saying one time. I was like, yo, look, for me, when we was after the show with the race stream or whatever, whatever, I turned up, right? But when the guys in the VIP, they probably don't even remember. But I went there. I was like, yo, man, it's Casper Novis, man. That dude that turned up last. Did you? Oh, yo, what up? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So sometimes for me, I walk around. I see dudes. You know, there's a lot of artists I see, man. You know, everybody acting like... They all extra, extra. I really, for me, it doesn't do anything to me because me, I'm boof soldiers and buffalo soldiers. I'm gonna go back there. We're gonna continue come on management doing what we always do the best. Keep grinding. But for an artist that wants maybe one time, one day for us to do him something, if you walk around here looking all extra, we just look at you like this nigga stupid because that's exactly how we see. We see you as stupid. We don't care, dog. I don't care. Like for me, if I see anybody who is above my level. I'm not going to act extra or front on him. If I know that I want to do something with him, I always humble myself. Doc, you don't even know how many times or how many artists that I get. Yo, homie, what's up? Man? What we going to do that, John? I do that, dog, because I know I need something for that nigga. Mm. Because when I do something with him and I'm on that platform, people see me. Even if they see him, but they see me. Everybody shines different, bro. People see me like, yo, man, but that's buff there, dog. And whatever. So you got to build your own. I build my own status. You build your own status and you build it right. And you 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 take away that pride. Like I say, Casper, a.k.a. and then we're humble before they blew up. Mm. And when they blew up now, yo, if they want to talk to you, they don't want to talk to you. But the thing is, they were humble before they went. You know what I mean? So uh, I see you. I see you. Anyway, Phil. Phil's just walked in. Yeah, so yeah, if you do, a, you, you want to intro yourself, then I'll just catch you up to what we've just spoken about just now. Uh, I think the audience knows. Just do that at the beginning. Okay. You know, time is precious, and you know, said so good, man. I sadly. mean, it's, you want to turn this whole thing down? That's that's on you. But let me tell you, <laughs> okay, this is what's happened so far. So. Buffalo Soldier was once a Sunkura artist named Pretty Boy. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
mm-hmm. all TV stations got the music. So it's, it gets kind of difficult when it's more radio stations, yeah. more TV stations, and more platforms of, of, of let's say newspapers, media, or whatever. So look, it's it's just going to be more and more and more. But uh, it kind of gets hard for for an artist and for independent artists. So it it's, gets expensive as hell for independent yeah. artists. You know what I mean? You know, kind of go have to go back to to record labels that have budgets to push an artist from the get go, kind of thing. And imagine, like you know, the way labels are struggling and SA now to put out budgets for artists, and that's where most of the fights are coming from, you know, because yeah. guys get signed to deals and they think, oh well, I'm under I Sony, made it. <laughs> and mm-hmm. Sony's gonna give me 2.5 million to push my album. Nah, man, Sony's not gonna give you 2.5 million. They're gonna give you 50 grand and tell you to piss off. <coughs> Yeah. And give yeah. you the worst deal ever. Mm-hmm. So it's hard, man. Like it really is hard. I, I totally agree with that, man. Like now, like you said, now you said when Channel O split. I actually just, I just figured, like you know, mm-hmm. but, but for real, back in the day we mm-hmm. only had Channel O, and you couldn't even count MTV Europe because we weren't really trying to watch MTV Europe like that. We, yeah. Channel O really gave Africa created its own stars. Mm-hmm. You know, everything that came after that didn't really matter. You know, but now. Every, the decisions that were taken, I think, by the big TV networks are the ones that have hurt us the most because this whole feed, 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 feed thing already started this whole rotation problem. Because why you got to have different feeds when Africa should just be seeing the same thing? Mm-hmm. It's your programming that you need to sort out. Yeah. You know? You need to cover each region. But now they've taken that away from all of us. It just made it so much harder. Imagine you're in Zim now and you're trying to blow up across Africa. Where are you going to put your stuff? You still need to cross a border to do that. Yeah, it's yeah, hard now. Man. It's a mess now, man. So, so I guess even for you, Buff, like a lot of a, a lot of uh, your initial success was due to like timing. You pretty much came in at the perfect time. Yeah. It was a perfect timing as well. Um, I would say that because the the mark was made at that time, which is, um, you know, it was now just up to me to just stay relevant. But the biggest job was done already. Mm. But look, um, even though it's never, it's never, you know, you can't, sit, you can't sit down. I'm like, yo, man, I've already made it, because every time you submit a video, every time whatever, you're, you're pretty much uh, uh, treated like any other guy who submitted his video, because the committee still has to approve if the quality is good. Look, it's gonna be ah, it's powerful. Okay, just put it on. But if the quality is still not good, they just quite gonna put it on a, on a lower. You know what I mean? A level, C level. I mean B level, C level. Yeah, I mean, but at least if you got the name behind it already, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it helps. It kind of helps. You know what I mean? So, but look, like I say, you know what I mean? Like for for us, for me, I still face that same question with dudes will ask me. You know what I mean? Like, yo, you know, how can we get our stuff on or whatever? Which to me, I've, I've always been saying to everybody, anybody who will tell you the same thing, who's independent or whatever, that just take sacrifices, bro. You just got to sacrifice certain things to, you know, to really have what you... You cannot think, dream. if you really, really, really want to make it in the industry and you say you want to make it out there and you say music is really what you want to do, like I wanted it. I think for me sometimes I, I'm like, I kind of sit back and try to measure yeah. how much niggas really want this. Because I sit back, I'm like, yo, God, do you know I really want this? Mm. Because dudes, me, I'm the kind of guy like, you know I mean? I'll call, come, I'm like, yo, come. We need to shoot that video, bro. Or we need to do this thing. Come, I'm like, yo, okay, all right, cool. Right now, you know, the fans are slow or whatever. I'm like, yo. I'm about to sell that car real quick, though. Mm. I sell that car, Oof, dude. I don't even. I'll, I'll even tell call a nigga like, "Yo, man, I'm at the garage right now, about to sell that car real quick. We got <laughs> to shoot that video." Straight like up. I tell you, the budget for his uh, Ziawa was like 140,000 rands. I had to sell the car and did some other investments, whatever, whatever, to put that money down to shoot that video. That's me. That's always been me. Like I told you, you can't be wearing no Jordans if you if you really want this music thing. You cannot wear no Jordans if you do not have a dope ass video that you wish you ha- you need to have. You cannot be out just just talking, yo man. But you know they always putting bath on though everything. But dog, do you even know what I go through to really put that video on? Mm. We still did all that budget, that whole hype. Promotion, put money also in the promotion, do whatever, you know, to Nigeria and all that stuff. After we drop it, and it's still gonna treat you like, oh, uh, yeah, okay, uh, we're gonna view our uh, next week, whatever. We all first that too. They're gonna give us an answer next week. We first touch this too. And we, I'm like, yo, because sometimes, you know what I mean? We send them hash emails. I call them, I, call, I, I say some hash, like, yo, man, 
But why you guys always got to treat us like that, man? You know I spent 140,000, man, shooting that video. And you telling me I have to wait till next week? But this is what I'm just saying, man. It really, if you see a Nigerian guy, if you see Ice Prince chilling with Jay-Z, it's not because Ice Prince is hard enough to get you with Jay-Z. Jay-Z don't know no Ice Prince. He don't care about no Ice Prince, bro. But Ice Prince got the money to pay somebody who's going to hook him up with a Jay-Z picture. So tell me which... Any private sponsor or any Zim, Zim nigga who's willing to put money down to go chill with, yo, man, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling with Davido now, or I'm chilling with uh, uh, whatever other artist on the average that maybe a nigga can afford to. Ain't nobody gonna do that. <laughs> nobody is willing to make sacrifices, but they wanna be at the top. Awesome. You cannot, you cannot be, don't ever, no matter what you do, let mm. me try, hear me out. You yeah. never, like, uh, there's no rapper or in, in Zim who can be like, yo, I'm, I'm going to and toe with AKA right now. It's not gonna happen, dude. How is it gonna happen? What sacrifices are you willing to take to be toe to toe with AKA? Before AKA got in the game, they spent like 300,000 rands for his PR, you know that, right? His father put money down. But niggas be out here on some, yo, I wanna get in. I wanna, it's not really, you know that, for me, I call that, that that's that hood. Shit. We used to do that a lot in the hood. Like, we be out here like, yo, man, but you know, I'm hot, I'm hot than that nigga, though. I could take that nigga by any time, but alright, cool, man. But you can't take his level when we're here now. Anybody can take any nigga from where he at. But niggas are not really. This is my thing. I say to the niggas, sacrifice. If you can sacrifice first, right? If five of Zim artists right now start really sacrificing and put a budget on the video or whatever and submit it there, there's no way the channels are going to refuse those videos for status. And secondly, the sponsors here will know that the movement has begun. That niggas are now doing for themselves. So, yo, man, maybe we should sponsor that because that's the new movement. Because the corporate always want to move with, with the new movement. The reason why SA Hip Hop is all of a sudden, hey, you know what I mean? The corporate, everybody's video that comes out is going to sp sponsor. Sponsored. There's product placement there. There's vodka. There's whatever. For me, my advice seems kind of harsh. But it's the truth, dog. I'm from the hood. I ain't trying to pamper you. I'm from the hood, man. I tell you like it is, man. I'm from a fuck nigga. I took it to store him over my hood. This nigga saw how niggas were trying to hassle me. You know what I mean? Like, they don't give a Niggas don't give a Niggas don't care. Niggas are like, I'm like, dudes, yo, man, we out, you know what I mean? We're going on. I'm gonna be. This other nigga, I say, F off, nigga. But he group and he doing whatever. He doing, what, but they don't care, dog. Niggas on, you know, high on there, whatever. People don't really care, bro. They don't care. But if dudes really, really, really serious about their career and serious, really, really serious, dog, the same sacrifices you gotta make. You gotta stay two months with no Jordans or you know swag. <laughs> so when you when you go on, when you when you now on the mainstream, whatever. Then get them Jordans to complement what niggas see on TV. But you cannot rock Jordans first, bro. It's all the way around. <coughs> right. But then again, a lot of the Jordans in Zimbabwe aren't yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the exact word I used. <laughs> like, dude, you're in a colorway that hasn't even come out yet. <laughs> Funniest thing, like you know the you know the Oreo fours dropped like two months ago. Uh, a dude was rocking them in February and they were brand new. I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. Maybe you got the whole Maybe you got the whole Make us a connected out here, man. So Don't hate. <laughs> I was about to say maybe his uncle. Then I realized no, maybe maybe his nephew worked in a sweatshop in China, man. I don't yeah, know. Right, right. Right. So, so all right, so okay, so the movement came out. Uh, he dropped the album. Uh, a couple of singles from there blew up. And yeah. uh, stand up is Zulu. Yeah, it's not uh, your favorite song. Well, it's not necessarily my favorite. I just know it's probably the it's, it's, it's probably the hottest. Dog, if you, if you saw his face, man, when we were performing, he's not. Man, it's you didn't so see me on I from the stage. See you. That's, that's what you people don't know. Man. You, you see us going crazy on stage. We can see everybody. My dude, you were too light skin in the crowd. Exactly. <laughs> the way he was jumping, I'm sure you could see you, bro. You check. Did you see the leaps, bro? Man, the I leaps. Was, that's what we were just saying. This huh? dude was it's like he was dunking every day. Guys, more energy, more energy. He did his ball, man. He did his ball all the time. Oh, come on, dog. They jump on it. Because we have a competition, like whenever. We perform, we always look back like, ah, nigga. Who, who I was jumping higher than you. Highest jump. <laughs> like, nah, you jump. It was, it's funny, though. Know? I'm like, man, he did it high for the cool, for the dude, for the big dudes. Oh, yeah. big dudes. I'm like, yo, man. Because I saw a lot of big dudes like, yo, man, who was on me? So, yo, 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 she just jumping out. Like, <laughs> all big dudes think, like, you know what I mean? Nigga John. Because a nigga, nigga, you know, he. Uh, the beans is like, he wants to jump like that too. I'm like, nah, dog. <laughs> 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 
Trust me, baby. Yeah. You're flexible. When your ankles are swollen in the morning and your knees are looking this way. Nah, yeah, but you fit, because I mean, we hit the gym all the time, so yeah. I guess maybe it's the gym, you know? It yeah. is, it he is. Just, he's just taking time to, you know, lose it, but I think he loses. I think one quarter of getting years, strong right? inside. Oh, yeah. But yo, he, he's <laughs> <laughs> That internal strength. <laughs> in the gym. Yeah, snap. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, so yeah, yeah, no, you, you put out, you put out this item. Some singles blew up off of it. True. And what was, True. what was the next thing? What happened next? We started, put, you know, I mean, yo, look, um, I had some singles come out there for my empire, whatever. Our next move was to tour, go to Nigeria, go to East Africa, go wherever, you know, all those countries. So we started touring, we started doing all stuff. We did Swaziland, uh, we did Zambia, uh, we did uh, East Africa, which is Tanzania, and Uganda. And then after we did Nigeria, we stayed long in Nigeria, like a month or two. Yeah. We toured in three states in Nigeria, Port Harcourt, Lagos, I forgot the other one, but yeah, we did about three states in, in Lagos, North, whatever it is, yeah, but we did about three states in, in Nigeria, stayed in, you know, uh, uh, sort of, uh, did, we were doing some work with uh, artists like uh, Two Faces at that time, we had, um, uh, we were also doing a show, I think it was, part, for us it would probably be like, I think it was probably one of the first reality TV shows though, because we were doing a show called Life of a Party at that time, where we shoot. Um, me and Waxy, and then we thought we were doing like a Sweet 16, yeah. but for like, you know what I mean, it was 2010. Mm. So I would like to think it was the first reality TV show, because mm. it used to show on Channel like, every Sunday. Oh, what? Yeah, Life of a Party, it's on YouTube too, you can check it out. Yeah, you should sue Larry for taking your name. Yeah, you ain't, you ain't in a date that yeah. But you know, because we never, you know, because me and Waxy's pretty, so ain't nobody trying to claim it. So but, um, so at that time, and then we did, you know, we did this. Uh, there was a lot of artists, even you know, even in this uh, disrespectful boy. I was an Embana boy. That time he was this. <laughs> he had a song called I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. You know, he was still an upcoming youth at that time. You know, yeah. uh, I remember, the, you know, uh, DJ Humility actually brought this, the thing to us, the CD to us. Me and Wax is like, yo, Wax, man, help push this boy. You know, so most artists were there. There was a lot of artists. It was Terry G, you know. The one they call, we told you one they call. Uh, there's a guy also from Botaco called Danke Mighty. He's one of the guys who started that whole style that Tima and him do. He was also, he's he's also big in the uh, in the in, in his hood, like in that area, because that's where Timaya and uh, Pato Rankin and all of them came from. The he's also like a, almost like an Afro dan yeah, well, yeah Afro dancehall type. Yeah, thing. and then we did we now going out we now went out into we did Malaysia, uh, me and Waxin and Duncan Mighty as well, you know. So since then, you know, we just like it was just like us told in trying to. Touch some celebrities, you know, collecting, connects, getting collects, you know, I mean, connects from everywhere, you know, from all parts of uh, every angles we could, you know, come across. But yeah, you know what I mean? Since you brought it up, let's talk mm. about this disrespectful mm. boy that you're talking about. The disrespectful boy. <laughs> Violence. <laughs> <laughs> what was the story behind the Burner Boy beef, man? Um, okay, this is the thing, right? There's been, so let me say, there's been some, there's been interviews where Fuzu and them would interview me and ask me. I remember even on Ziao when they asked me, right? When I was shooting Ziao, behind the scenes of Ziao video. And then they said, so what do you think about all these upcoming dancehall artists coming from Nigeria, these new dancehall artists like Pato Rengi and Banner Boy? Yeah. Get it, Pato Rengi and Banner Boy. I didn't say, yo, Banner Boy, this, whatever. I said to them, listen, any upcoming dancehall artist who's upcoming, that's why he's upcoming and he's new, he still has a long way to go because it's still, you know what I mean? a lot to do in terms of dance and music. I'm already 10 years winning awards, you know what I mean? So they, ha they have a lot to do and a lot, you know, for them to, uh, bigger shoes to fill in. So that was, I remember that was the time I said that, and then uh, after that, I kept on preaching that, telling people that I am the original and I'm the king of African dancer. Not Zimbabwean dancer, not Malawian dancer, or Kenya or Uganda or Nigeria, but <coughs> African dancer yeah. as a whole, you know what I mean? So. For me, they might have seen it like, ah, yo, this nigga, and whatever. And then in the channel awards. And then I went and I told the people that, you know what I mean, I am king. I'm officially the king of African dance. So that they know that I am. And the, ain't nothing wrong with that. They have to know. It's okay if AKA goes and pull a Kanye West on stage. It's okay if Casper goes and pull a Kanye West on stage. But when Buff Soldier says he's king of African dance, then they're like, ah, but this nigga, who did this nigga? Just come on, though. Like, you see, for, for, this is the thing, right? For us, we kind of have that I don't care attitude. Like, people say whatever, we just like, yo, man, I really don't care. That's the thing with us. That's something that get, kept us going. So people could whatever say what they want to say. Ah, yo, dog, I really don't care, bro. For me, if I feel like I want to say something, I want to do something at that point in time, I could just I could, I could say it. Nothing will stop me. And I said it. And we said it. 
I'm king of African dance. Throughout the years, every time when I win an award, I've been humble about it. Thank God, you know, my mom, you know, the record label or whatever, whatever, it's always been like that. But that's just like, you know, I mean, going to the stage, you say, you know, whatever, but you really want to say something. I, we never thought, I never thought I was going to win that. But the fact that, because the Nigerians and the Ghanaian niggas um, were also campaigning hard, they really, really, you know, because Pato Ringing was in the category in the Shata Wale, and they really, really wanted that um, award. And to me, me and Waxo were like, yo, man, I mean, and Kamu, sorry, we're like, we're not going to win this. Let's just have fun, chill, you know, we in our suits, whatever, it's all good. So when it was we a won, fur, it, actually, it was a fur. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, in the, yeah I was in, I was in a, a fur. biggest fur. Yeah, I was in a fur in a chinchilla, and uh, I remember asking him, "Come, like, you hold my chinchilla," because it was yeah. an emotional thing. <laughs> it was real, you know what I mean? Good. It was real. We so, were ready to get the award because like, we didn't even know the category was coming up first. So and then they, yeah, and then he came up first, dog. Yo, the the butterflies. We're looking at Denise Zimba and uh, Pamela. What's her name? Andrew. Pam, no, Pam Jessica, Andrews. Pam Andrews. Andy, Jessica. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I've come to appreciate Kamu was a thirsty one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was a thirsty one. Boy T, like they all like just like. But yeah, Boy T, in front of us. Yeah, so we like right in front of us. So already, dog. So we were. Can't get your number, girl. Can't get your number. We wasn't really prepared. Like we was no, okay, yeah, you know, you can't be prepared. Like Bible saying, like we never expected it. Yeah, uh, like for us, we never expected it. So we was just like, ah, man. Yeah, man, just whatever, man. And then, but it was like at least they should call on the dancer category in front, in front of there. But ah, they just started with the dancer category. Bread, the blood, the, the belly was boiling. This nigga said, stop this. But yo, and then they just called the names. And you know when they say sometimes you need to be able to feel the blessing sign. You feel the blessing like. I was like, all right, it's time to re- tell these youths who he really is. So I went there and I told him I was king of African dancer. And then everybody was not happy about it. But yeah, we said it. They were feeling really happy. I remember KO's manager was even telling one of the guys there, eh, you know, that's one Tabiso. guy that just, yeah, Tabiso <laughs> likes talking too much. He thinks he knows, <laughs> he knows everything I do. And then he, he told somebody that, um, that why do I think that, uh, that's what I hate. The what do I think, you know, why is this what Zim all about? Such arrogance. This is after AKA and the Casper with, you know, yeah, I'm hip hop. Yeah, I'm what, what and stuff. Hey, this one goes and say whatever. But Casper even said some other long year. We got money now. Everybody was talking whatever. All the buff soldiers who's from Zimbabwe should be humble. Hey, nigga, hey, nigga. <laughs> I'm King African dancer. I walk on the stage, nigga. Like, <laughs> like, I'm King African dancer, nigga, for real. You know what I mean? So we said it. And we did what we had to do. For me, like, you know what I mean? For we see the things, I don't promote beef. And I'm not about, I'm not one to go around prom- promoting beef. Yep. I, feel, I feel like beef is, is created mostly because ni- niggas can confront each other and then tell off, you know, fix their problems right away. It's always like, yo, that nigga say that? Oh, for real? And then you, you, know, you start talking from that. Like, yo, that nigga, yo, that nigga. Eh. And then you go diss a song, diss a nigga on a, on a song or whatever. But I think, like, you know I mean? We should just be able to confront each other. And, you know what I mean? Speak about it. Whatever differences or problems that we have, you know? So I'm not one to promote beef or whatever. You know what I mean? Me, I'm all about the unity. That's why I did that Zim dance out to the world too. Just to show that, man, there's no beef, bro. You know what I mean? And I support whatever, what the youth are also doing and everybody else is doing. You know what I mean? So, yeah. all right. All right. so, then, so um, then that's how it started. So sorry to disturb. Yeah. I really have to rush now. It's, okay. We're in the midst of Haifa. And uh, as you know, things are hectic. So enjoy the rest of the episode with Dan. It's your boy Phil Chad, a.k.a. Flynn Floss, the big boss, a.k.a. Feeds P, a.k.a. Shamari Dengaro Drink, a.k.a. Sexy and Lovu, <laughs> a.k.a. Filthy Phil, the honorable, doctorable, unmistakable. I'm out. More from Buff coming up soon. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so that's that's how it started. I mean, he obviously caught feelings, the fact that you said you were king of African dancehall. Mm-hmm. Right? And then what happened after that? Well, I just feel like, you know what I mean, at that, at that time, you know what I mean, like, that's where the whole thing started. The whole, you know what I mean? Because like we were at a party, he approached me. He's like, you know what I mean? Dude grabbed my hand. We're at the, uh, the Les All White party. Mm. He pulled me, you know, trying to rough me up. Like, yo, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about I'm like, all right, okay. First of all, that's disrespectful you trying to pull my hand like that, like I'm a kid brother or something, you know? Yeah. And then we went to the back and then we started talking, like, you know, and then five of, five more niggas followed him. And he like, brother, you know, I hate you being disrespectful, you know? I'm like saying disrespect you for what? Why would I disrespect you? He's like, nah, you've been talking smack about me. I'm like, ah, brother, come on, easy yourself, brother, man. Yeah, I understand. 
He's like, nah, boy, you know, I'm not taking <laughs> from nothing, man. I'm from Brixton, what, what, and stuff like that. I told you, you know, all that, whatever thing. I'm like, yo, easy. So, man, I'm from fuck with it, brother. All that, br- whatever, you know, br- you f- you Nigerian, brother. All that, whatever you want to bring in, it's not even necessary right now. He's like, no, but you know what I mean? You've been talking smack about, but no, but don't come here with second information. What did I say to you? That you, that, you know, you heard that I've been talking about you. You know? And he's like, yo, you've been disrespecting me. So from there, the boy, some other boys come and then split with you, know? So just, like, yo, buff, man, just chill, man. This, this dude's probably high or something. You know what I mean? It's lazy, it's party, don't try to start a fight. I'm like, no, I ain't even trying. And they were making it seem as if I want to start a fight. You know what I mean? I went there with Queen V. Why would I want to start a fight? I'm in all white with Queen V. Why would I want to start? I don't even have a mobile niggas there. Why would I want to start a fight there? So we went back to the VIP. We're chilling there. Everybody's in the VIP. Bonang, all the celebrities, you, you know what I mean? SA. I felt like for me, the dude wanted to put up a show. So he came up. He like, this time now, there's like a few niggas behind me or whatever. This dude comes flying from the back, trying to sucker punch me. He flying, so the guys at the back kick me. So, you know, turn around, I'm like, what's going on? So I see this dude coming, I'm like, ah, you know? So the bouncers and the other, and the other lazy boys, they pushed me down. It was slippery, it was a bit drizzling. Slippery. So it was drizzling stuff and the bounce. So I went, I fell down. So when I fell down, Queen V was there. They break Queen V's um, bottle of wine. Dude, I got up. I'm trying to get up like these dudes are pushing me down. So it's like four or five more dudes pushing me down. And these dudes just behind and they kept on pushing me down, kept on pushing me down. And then I get up and then I, I stood aside and I was like, yo, what's going on here, dudes? They're like, yo, bro, you gotta, you gotta come out. You got some niggas are pushing me out of the party. So they pushed me out of the party. I'm like, all right, man, it's cool then. It's on. You guys disrespect me like this. I'm going to come back. I've been in SA for 15 years, man. Been in Huber, been in Huber. I know goons. I know people. I know all the African goons, man. Congolese, Angoli- Angolians, Nigerians, Zimbabweans, wh- whichever ones you want to, any goon gang you want to think of. So we came back. Mob Deeper came back with a combi with like 20 niggas. Shut down the whole party. You know what I mean? Panabo, where the dude was nowhere to be found in rent. So lazy boys now come like, yo, buff, I thought we were family. I'm like, oh, now you f- we're family now? After this dude disrespected me in front of all these. The celebrities now with family because I, I came back with, with a gang of goons. If I didn't come back with a gang of goons, it was just going to be, all right, disrespect the owning. That's it. So, you know what I mean? So, since then, you know, he was trying to shoot a video the following day. I went there again. No, he was actually uh, at a, a taboo, at a gig at a taboo. Is he pull, pull up with the Rolls Royce? I pull out there with my gang of Congolese niggas. Boom, Russian nigga again. They had to call the police. The police came, I was like, yo, man, what's going on? The police like, yo, you tell me, like, I ain't, we ain't touched the dude yet. So I don't know which y'all, yet. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you know, we just standing here. The police told his dudes clear, like, yo, we can't do anything to them because they ain't doing anything yet. They ain't violated nobody. They just walk in here. We're not even in the club. You know what I mean? So after the, the third day, he was shooting a video on uh, in, in the hood in New York. Yeah. And then we went there again with the goons. That's where we had some sort of, you know what I mean, like my gang. And he had hired some few people <laughs> to protect him in the hood and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, man. But, you know, we just, you know, we just dismantled and then we left, you know what I mean? Like, since then, you know what I mean? He's been there, you know. We just left it like that. Yeah. All right. But any possibility at some point of you guys getting to talk about it or whatever? Look, man, me, I am a... Let me tell you something about me, though. Um, I'm a, I'm a businessman at the same damn time, right? Mm. I don't catch feelings, you know what I mean? I don't hold grudges like that. The only thing that had happened was that what we had told him after was like, all oh, you guys is management. You need to tell that dude to just go publicly and apologize, and it'll be over. But for me, as long as he doesn't apologize like that, that means there's just beef in the air. Yeah. And there's war in the air. And I know that the dude is coming here also. So, you know what I mean? Anything might just pop. You know? A dude, dude can be coming to Zimbabwe. That's my hometown, man. Ain't nothing will pop. I can't guarantee that, though. I just make some phone calls. <laughs> he needs to know as well. You know what I mean? For me, if we're going to meet at an award event or whatever event, it's going to happen, man. It's going to pop. Trust me. All right, man. We see you. We see you. Uh, I guess probably the last thing we can talk about is this... Uh, this angle you're going for with the the Zim dancehall artists, because I mean that's just yeah. blown up in Zim now. And you know what I mean? True obviously, yeah. they can they can obviously benefit from the, the the experience and the knowledge you've had in African dancehall. 
uh, ever since back in the day and whatever, you know what I mean? Today. So, yo, you did a song, Zim Down Soul to the World. Yep. The bunch of artists, including uh, Sniper Storm, Shinso Man, Gaspi Warrior, yep. Lady Squander, yep. Celsius. Yeah, so you did that joint. Yeah. Uh, I believe you're going to shoot a video for it. Yeah, we definitely shoot a video for it. All right, so what's what's the plan then for Zim Down Soul? Uh, look, uh, for me, I just want to see what we can, whatever we can do to uh, shoot a good video, great video, submit it on the um, on the you know DSTV platform, um, you know what I mean Channel O, MTV, Trace, or whatever, you know, and we we'll see how it goes. Maybe one day the track will win an award or whatever, you know. But God's grace, or you know, what I mean, whatever happens, bro. But in me, for me, my mission and my plan is just to you know to put artists out there, the artists that wanted to be, that wanted to participate in in this um, you know history in the making move, you know what I mean. So. That would be yeah, dope. I'm actually yeah. curious to see what will happen when yeah. all these Zim Dantel artists artists are on like uh, expose try, the rest just, of Africa. Try, try to picture a video, dog, like a dope video yeah. on red, shot on red, on the full HD. Yeah. None of them, none of them half HDs. <laughs> quarter HDs <laughs> that they got out now, or man. iPhones. That would be dope, I'm man. Only shooting videos on the iPhones because they got the p- pixels. Oh, well. <laughs> so yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's not a diss, boy. It's, it's trying to encourage homie. Yeah, no, of to course. Step it up. All right, man. No, yeah. looking forward to that. We'll be, we'll be waiting to see the video on on Adam for sure. On on the for DSTVs sure. prayers, and etc. That's the prayers. Hi, man. Dope. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for sitting yo, man, with thank, us. We've actually yo, had quite a long interview. Yo, thanks for having us, homie, man. Yo, appreciate it, bro. You know what I mean. You have an idea. We in the studio right now with uh, uh um we in the studio with with with, with Zeus. Zeus, you know that, I mean? um, Botswana Zeus. Yeah. yeah, Botswana Zeus. Yeah, man, with uh, Yagi. with Yagi and uh, Odias there. To listen to the Odias and Yagi episode, yeah. scroll up. Mm-hmm. Go on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to say, all right, man. Yo, uh, shout out to you, Buff. Shout yes, out, sir. Kamu, man. Yeah, uh, bless uh, man no. Dope. This is going to be another one of their marquee episodes. Buffalo Soldier on Two Broke Twimbos. Ah, for sure. It's what we do. So don't forget, subscribe, to follow, to like, mm-hmm. download. Everything is available. Two Broke Twimbos is so easy to find now. And yeah, and yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah, people always ask me, yo, where, where, where can we find Buff? Where can we find Yo, at Buffalo Soldier 1. It's Twitter. Is at Buffalo and then Soldier is S O U L J A H one. Same as Instagram. Oh yeah! By the way, we, we didn't get a chance to talk about UNA because mm-hmm. you pretty much started a record label. Yeah, yeah, UNA, United Nations of Africa. Yeah, it's five years old now. Oh, dope! Mm. What what artists you got on them? Uh, Queen V. We got uh, you know the famous Lil Wayne lookalike boy Young Nucho with his crew slick now. Young Nucho. And in by the way, by the way, mm. to listen to the Queen V episode, mm. scroll up. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, all right, cool. Uh, I mean, you're in partner with my uh, management team, which is Gwenya Entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, so it's you know, UNA and Gwenya. Dope. Yeah. All right, man. For sure. Big things. We like it. We like it. Zim on the map, etc., etc. This for is sure, Two Broke sure. Trombos. We out. Aha! <laughs> we broke. 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 We Miss the what I mean in This I did bomb to get you a summer pain The whole of heavy when I said the slag and team Who knows he did Trudeau If can refuse it I will convert them like they overweight Who knows who did it If can resist it Dance and music if you try it So me say Oh, no, 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 no Them send the papa sin a good man a forward man Call me on my nation Put the country on the map with a shit anywhere, everywhere, anytime, any day Member said this are the dance hall general Local, international We make everybody jump, we no partial Crazy, that is normal Shaka zita kungam kabe pa ma vocal Koi, universal Ove renga shata nyora unge ma pen pal Dim dance hall, what a powerful thing Rubadanga be a good vibes it bring Anyway to play, them say what a thin thing Buffalo soldier, follow the pattern of the thing I The music no 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 visa Born not the borders I'm using the tape, the orders So me say Jump for that, jump, jump for that The music no 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 battery Fun for that, fun, fun for that The music no 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 country By fire, by force Missing 